I mean, maybe at, I mean, I guess he had a slight opportunity to come back at the end of the second at 5-3 maybe when I was serving for a deuce, potentially, I'm not sure anymore. But then, you know, obviously two sets to love on your first break, you feel like it's probably not going to, you know, he's not going to be able to turn this match around anymore. I'm feeling too good. Now I know uh, I can bring my serves, you know, when I, when I need to. I got the rhythm. Um, so then obviously, you know, maybe... I see does the coming forward still work? I like coming forward when I'm up in the score and just try maintaining that and if things don't work out that way you always can play it safe again. So obviously it's it's uh, it's tough for the opponent, you know, trying to look for the rhythm as well because I'm trying to break it at that point. But uh, it's enjoyable, you know, it's a great night of ten for tennis, uh, not too much wind, great opponent who was also ready to do some shot making and um I know since a long time, so it's obviously always going to be fair and tough and nice, but uh, I mean, I enjoyed it, you know, uh, like I always do, in particular the night sessions here in New York. Roger, uh, I know you think maybe I've trashed on TV prior to the match, but with regard to Andy and his decision, you've always been a pretty gracious guy and wins and losses and even sympathetic to some of your opponents. What's your feeling about him retiring and, and the increased shred of you that feels bad about denying him over the years? Um, well, look, I mean, uh, you're always going to have someone around, you know. Um, I had many guys also who denied me, denied me many things. That was the last thing that came to my mind when he told me he was going to retire, that I felt bad about it. I don't think that's what he wanted either. He was happy to go into retirement, you know. Uh, but he wants to finish this one strong, and uh, there's no rules on how you announce it, how you do it. We've seen so many different champions go out in different ways so um, he chose to do it this way and I'm, I'm so happy for him really he's had an amazing career um, some expected better um, some expected worse but I'm sure he's happy with what he achieved because he almost achieved everything he ever wanted you know maybe that loose Wimbledon title potentially but let's forget about that he was in those Wimbledon finals he could have gotten that title, and that's what I said when I beat him in 09. He deserves this title as well. So, in my mind, he is a, he is a Wimbledon champ as well, and, and a wonderful um, ambassador for the game. So, I'm thankful for everything he's done uh, for the game, and uh, especially here for tennis in America. It's not been easy after Agassi and Sampras and Courier and Chang and Connors McEnroe, you name it, I even probably forgot bunch of them because you guys have so many good plays in the past. It's been hard for him as well at times, but I thought he always did the best he could, and that's all you can ask from a guy like Andy. Bob. Bob. Well, I was just going to say, it's time when you play something like Bjorn, when you played it back in 1999, you lost to, and you look at the difference in your careers. Do you ever take a moment to reflect on that? How you can lose to somebody and then you go on and have a career like that? Yeah, it's, yeah it is quite fascinating, actually, how careers go, and Sometimes how juniors really don't matter, uh, even though I probably was a better junior than he was, you know, but uh, I wasn't as tough as a competitor uh, back in the day. And I remember going to a future in Greece and spending some time with him there. Uh, I think we were both waiting for lucky losers at one point. And he got in, and I didn't, because he was ahead of me in the rankings. And here we are on center court, uh, you know, at the US Open. It's quite amazing. I'm, I'm happy we both got the opportunity to experience something like we did tonight. Of course, I never believed that moment that I was going to um, become such a great player. I remember walking off practice courts and telling my, my partner in practice, I'm sorry, I just I don't enjoy it right now. I have to stop because I'll just ruin your practice uh, instead of toughening it out and making a good practice for him at least. I was so weak right back then and so... Uh, it's just different times to look, and uh, I'm happy I turned the corner at the right times, learned from my mistakes, and um, and now I can enjoy it so much more, you know. And I was able to make it on the big stage, and that I did react in time is, I am very um, relieved that that happened in my career. Roger, Roger, I don't mean to uh, put you on the spot, but um, you know, the great American journalist uh, who really helped popularize the game, Art Collins, has been in the office. He's here. Be careful what you say. <laughs> 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 I'm midway through my question. 
Okay, you can't stop now. That's it. It's always been enjoyable to work with you. Uh, I mean, always had a a smile, and uh, uh, he was really happy always to see me. I thought, um, and uh, good questions, you know, tough questions at times, but that's what you're supposed to be doing, right? And uh, never had a bad moment. I don't recall one. So that's been <laughs> well, exactly. But you still have some time to do it. I mean, the, this press conference is not over. So uh, no, I mean. Really, I only have only good things to say about Bud, and uh, and uh, thanks for being part of such a great game and making it even more wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Roger, um, Andy was asked about you know, the comparison of being 30 and being 30 and then... 31. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me so young, okay? <laughs> okay, I know. So the question was posed as 30. Okay. <laughs> in some ways. I already was pretty sad about the moment when sort of Sampras, Agassi, Moya, all the, the great Spanish we had in the game, um, Henman, you name him, all those guys, you know, that I used to watch on TV left the game. This is, I was sad back then, I remember, because uh, all of a sudden the guys from TV, they're gone, and you're only now playing your guys from your age. It's fun, but it's not the same. It's never going to be the same from them playing your heroes and idols and the people you looked up to on TV, but then I really started to enjoy, obviously, my uh, my generation. That one is, was an extremely strong one. Um, I mean, there's still a ton around. Uh, maybe not uh, uh, all those um, Grand Slam champions talking about. Safin obviously retired. Andy's on the way out. Uh, Ferrer's had some tough times. His injury late in the same. Um, so, Coria is not around anymore, you know. And, I mean, Albanian's still around. So, But, but it's... Um, I can, and then now Lubicic also retired, for instance. So it's, yeah, I mean, it's getting tough again. Eventually, I mean, I think we just had a record at, in Paris at the French Open where over 30 players made it into the main draw of the French Open. So there's, that means it's great action in some ways, but all of a sudden, you know, also in the next couple of years now, they're going to probably drop like flies, you know? So it's like, it's sad. That's how I felt when Andy told me. I, I was a bit sad, obviously, because. Um, that means maybe next year, you know, it means now in the next year at the Australian Open, for instance, no Andy Roddick. And for me, basically, I've always gone there, and he was there, and he was preparing and practicing on center court. And so I'll miss those moments, you know. And um, But it's how it goes, you know. And that's why I have always had the fortunate luck to get excited about my generation, the previous one, the past one, the ones that are coming up now, being able to play for history books at times, having now always chance of playing on center court, all those things keep me going. So when a few guys drop out of the game, I don't quote, totally lose it. I am sad about it, but in a good way, because I know they're happy. And that's uh, that's a good thing uh, anyway. Roger, if I could sort of bring you back to maybe an unpleasant moment last year here when you lost to Djokovic. It's not that unpleasant. It was a semis. Right. <laughs> but you, had, you had match points in, you know, in 2010. You had match points in 2011 when really you, you had the, the match more in your racket there. And I'm just wondering if, if, in the end, that loss is a positive for you. Yeah, I guess so, yes. Um, not right after the match point and not um, three weeks later, but uh, I felt... Um, I played a great US Open. I thought I played a great Wimbledon as well. I played a great French Open. So I knew I was actually playing really good tennis. It was just not happening for me. And then the question is, can you just maintain a good level of play without getting frustrated, you know, and wanting it too badly? Uh, I'm happy I had the right balance and uh, was able to just stay put and keep working hard and hoping that things were going to turn around for me. Did I have to make some tweaks? Potentially. I don't even quite recall it, but I remember 
sitting down and talking to everyone involved and trying to come up with improvements and the and the plan, what tournaments to play, even though a lot was obviously in place. And I, I like to follow a plan and then only later on really react if things go really poorly. But things weren't going awful for me. So. Say again. No, not yet. We can't win it this year. We lost to you, you guys. <laughs> you guys took us out at home. That's an unpleasant memory, right? <laughs> Well, so many names, but Bjorn Borg, I'm sure, was part of that okay, group. Uh, one, if that's okay, why, why, uh, what would you find with Bjorn? Uh, Just, I mean, I, I thought he did a lot for the game, uh, almost without wanting. He was just himself, and uh, I, mean, I remember him playing, really, but uh, I had the chance to meet him, spend some time with him, and you could just see what an interesting character, an interesting player he was, and then obviously bit of a myth, you know, him all of a sudden leaving so early and um, um, that makes it may really makes him probably the legend he is today. Um, for him leaving early, number one, but number two also just his incredible victories at Wimbledon at the French, where particularly at Wimbledon nobody thought he would ever win, most likely was his playing style back in the day. It just goes to show how how great he really was and back then obviously he he only I think went twice to Australia and uh, could have done uh, so many more things if the focus was only the slams, you know. Not that the focus is only the slams now, but it's very driven by the slams. So for me, uh, Bjorn was always a, a hero in many ways, obviously also being working together with Peter Lundgren from Sweden. Back in the day, he told me so many stories about Bjorn, and <laughs> some were funny, some were strange, and some were just incredibly fascinating, you know, and inspiring. So, um, yeah, so he's definitely one of those guys I... Maybe wouldn't want to play, but you want to just at least try to play against him. Last thing. What are your thoughts on the future plans and what the team needs to do on a personal level and then as a team? Yeah, same thing came. I go way back. God, I mean, I remember him in the juniors, under 16, under 14, maybe even. So um, she's only a couple of years younger, but obviously as a as a as a girl, you make it earlier, so. Uh, yeah, we we went through a lot at the same time, so I was very sad and really surprised when she retired the first time around and so happy when she came back, actually. And then the way she came back and bang, she won the US Open, she had a daughter, and now I can so much relate to her. And I guess it's easier to be a guy on tour, really. We can have kids while we're still playing. <laughs> For the girls, it's a bit more complicated. So, um, But I think she's also totally at peace and she looks, looks happy. Um, almost relieved to a degree. Uh, that's kind of how I see it right now. But what a great champion! I, I mean, she always had time for me as well. I mean, goes without saying that we like each other and um, that we always enjoy to see each other. And I always like to follow her. She was a great athlete, great, uh, great player, always friendly. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy she um, never turned bad just for success. She always stayed true to her character and. That's really what I enjoy uh, in particular about Kim as well. Thank you. My pleasure. Good to see you. I'll see you around. Congratulations.